Uh, whenever I'm in, in Italy, whenever I'm in Italy, I, I think about Rome. And Rome, well, Rome is what the Romans made of it. And Inspire is very much like Rome. Because, yes, indeed, we shouldn't laugh with that. Inspire, inspire is what we are going to make of it, what you are going to make of it. Now, the council and the parliament, in, in their wisdom, have decided upon this directive to cover all spatial data, basically all data linked to location, area, or surface. And as Vanda already very comprehensively explained, it covers all data which is held at any level of government when there are laws or regulation requiring their collection or dissemination. She also made reference to European law, directives which are indeed transposed and of course cascade on international law. But these are not the only laws, these are not the only regulations. Every region, every member state has a lot of laws and regulation requiring collection, dissemination of spatial data to do its job. So an inspire very much like the city of Rome is not there only to serve the emperor. Inspire is very much there to help the local, regional, national authorities to work better together. And we should see the reporting use case as only one small aspect of Inspire. It is one service which runs in the city of Rome, reporting. I was asked to talk about where Inspire governance is actually coordinated with all these pieces of thematic legislation. Now there's one thing you should know about European law. There is no necessity for one directive to refer to another directive and vice versa. Every piece of law stands on its own and is fully coherent within the environmental legal acquis. Actually, not only environment, but the entire legal acquis of the European Union. Now, there are a number of directives and regulations which make a reference to INSPIRE indeed. Consider this more a clarification than anything else. So whether we are working on transport, which is one of those policies which may have an impact on environment, or agriculture, which may have an impact on environment, and so on, all activities which relate to spatial data which is used in this particular context are governed by INSPIRE. So INSPIRE is very, very important. And I hope it is also seen as such by the colleagues in the member states who have indeed been working and have been very successful in a lot of areas on already establishing their spatial data infrastructures. Now one of the aspects where we had to be or have to be currently very careful, and this is also the subject of this workshop and another workshop that we will have in June, is that of course we do not create redundancies, that we do not make people do twice the same work for reporting or for implementing something under INSPIRE. And this is an enormous challenge because as our colleague from Germany just pointed out, reporting requirements is something which is not static, they are changing. There is currently an enormous activity ongoing with regard to streamlining. All reporting under the air quality directives is now being governed and Cathy from Austria will explain that furthermore, under one reporting decision. The same thing will be true very soon for all emission related reporting under the new uh, in industrial emission directive, where again seven current uh, directives and their reporting uh, obligations are being streamlined into one. The same thing has happened to water and there are now the discussions ongoing and I, uh, I actually quote from uh, a very recent meeting of the, uh, the Marine Strategy Framework Reporting Group, DIKE, 
where they are looking at the overlaps uh, between the habitats, birds, and the Marine Strategy Framework Directive. Because geographically, those areas overlap. In terms of assessments, the assessments overlap. So consequently, in order to report successfully under these different directives, there is a very good understanding with, within this group that the same type of data needs to be used, the same observations will enter into these reporting processes. Now historically, under Natura 2000 and the Birds and Habitats Directive, in the past there were different reporting contents which have been maintained and stored in a lot of member states. And it is not because at a certain moment parameters are added, are being removed out of this re uh, reporting, that they are not any more important and that we should throw them out of our spatial data infrastructure. Because of course it's the underpinning data which will allow us to obtain a kind of a historical and a long-term trend. Vanda already pointed out that the coordination with the reporting groups is ongoing. It's not an easy process because in a lot of cases, talking about governance, we came aware uh, that people discussing this reporting and how it should be done are not in touch with those who are working on INSPIRE. So we have two degrees of coordination. We at our level, we need to make sure that with our colleagues at the EEA, we maintain a common vision and a common approach. This is not easy. The same thing, of course, it's quite clear, exists in the member states. And this has given rise to a number of tensions, sometimes conflicts, who is deciding actually on the content, the content of the reporting. Now that is clear, this is never being the ambition, the role of INSPIRE. Content on what is being reported is discussed in these particular reporting working groups. The streamlining of the reporting content is again discussed within these working groups. The INSPIRE process is there at their service. It's also there at the service of those having to do the reporting in the member states. Together, at those two levels of governance within the member states and at our level, we can make sure that there will be no conflict of interest, let's call, or duplication of efforts. This is not going to happen from one day to the next. Rome wasn't built in a day. So over the next months, and I think in the context, as Vanda explained, of our maintenance program uh, over time, we will see more and more efficiency creeping in to those processes. I hope that, and I'm actually convinced that with the uh, thematic uh, examples that we are going to see today, and what we have already seen in the evolution of the data specifications from the previous version to the version that we have now on the table, a lot of these concerns have already been addressed. Is it already perfect? No. Rome is not perfect either today, so we will just have to be patient and continue to work on the way. And I think this workshop is a very important uh, brick that we are going to lay in this road ahead. So I thank you for your attention and of course we are open for any kind of questions.